Hello everyone, this is your captain speaking and welcome to Tutorial Speed Paint on how I did the first of my Zodiac 12, Leo. Now, first of all, this is the miniature of the Hellcat from Reaper Miniature. I'll have a link for it in the description. I decided to do the Zodiac 12 because I just found them on Reaper Mini and I thought that it would be a fun little thing that I could do, maybe add it into my Tomb of Annihilation series for my players to fight, and it's just a fun idea. And for the Leo, I had a lot of fun with object source lighting, lava effects, and a lot of fire. So this could be a fun way for me to learn from you, for you to learn from me, and a good experience as to what I do as a person. The very first thing that I did was base it in Mephiston Red, but you don't need to do that. I just thought I would first, and then I realized later that I shouldn't have done that first, so that's why it's red, I'm just saying. One thing that you'll notice about the Hellcat is that it has two separate bases. It has one on its three feet on the left, and one on its one foot on the right. That's a big problem. That was a big problem for me, because the miniature is bending in on itself, and it's not an even platform. This was an issue, because the Hellcat is a very specific size. It's too big for player character bases that come with the miniatures, and it's too small for medium monster bases to come with miniatures. So, I had to be a little creative. So I took a plastic cup, and I cut open the bottom, I made it into a circle, and I made it the exact size and shape that I wanted it to be, and glued it on. That... it sucked. It sucked. Once I had got the plastic cup base to the proper size, I took it outside and sprayed both sides with a primer that I just got from Walmart. It's just a basic paint primer. And then I covered one side heavily in Citadel Sterling mud to give it a nice lava-ish, like igneous rock texture. I did leave a small canal in the middle for the lava to flow through. Because the Hellcat does have two separate bases, I thought it could be straddling a small stream of lava to have a better effect. Once I had a good base of the Sterling mud, I used some model glue, some like model cement, to hopefully place the Hellcat down in a nice way. As I was placing it down, I realized that it was still bending and not laying flat, so here's a visual representation of what my solution was. It may not have been the smartest idea, but it worked. So shut up. Now is the time to start on the lava. So I actually went about it backwards the first time, but for my base I used the Citadel's Technical Blood for the Blood God because it's very thick and gives it a nice textured base. So that gave it, that made it look like water, which was a good start. And then I just highlighted it with some oranges and yellows. This was just how I did it. Usually what you would want to do is base it in yellow and then frame it with red and wet, wet blend it in with some oranges into the middle and then maybe play around with it in there. It worked for what I did, but that I'm just saying that doing it the opposite way would have been smarter. Once I based the Sterling Mud on the makeshift base that I created, and once the Hellcat had been glued down, I put some Sterling Mud all over the base of the miniature itself, and then I painted all of it in a black, or even just a dark brown if you prefer. And once you've done that, you can give it a nice light dry brush of dark gray to give it some depth. I then took some of the orange that I showed you earlier and I put it on a brush and dry brushed it heavily around the edges of the lava to show where the light would be coming off of it. It's fairly bright, so be fairly liberal with your dry brushing. It could go anywhere on the rock because it'll just show off anywhere. So just do some very heavy dry brushes of oranges around it and if you wanted to, you could even put a line on the, on the base of the rock to really maximize the effect. 
And on every part of the rock that you didn't dry brush, I suggest doing a, a line of a dark wash, maybe dark tone from Army Painter or any sort of black wash to really give it some depth to make it look a lot darker. Here you can see me struggling with trying to cover the red with yellow. This is why doing it the opposite way is better, because yellow doesn't cover too well, so you'll have to do multiple coats. So basing it in yellow in the first place would have been a lot smarter. But it did end up working, just do yellow first. <laughs> Here I added in the orange and decided to do some wet blending with the oranges and yellows, and the yellow actually got fairly dark, so if you don't want it too bright of a lava, this is the effect that you would want, but if you do, then you can just take some pure yellow after it's all dried and spot in some bubbles. Now that the base is finished, we can start working on the mini. So I shouldn't have based it in Mephiston Red because that's much too bright. I actually took some of Army Painter's Chaotic Red and gave that as the base. It was a much darker and easier to control tone. While the Chaotic Red was still drying, I took the Mephiston Red once more and I put it around the body and a little bit on the legs because I wanted to have it be brighter the closer to the chest it got. So I was going to do some wet blending of the Mephiston Red, Chaotic Red, Demonic, Demonic Yellow, and the Orange that I don't remember what it's called. All of that would be wet blended closer into the chest and I wanted to have the heart be almost the, ho the hottest part. I also did some very basic work on the fire on the mane. The mane was going to be a lot brighter than the rest of the body, so I needed to use a lot more yellows and oranges than reds. The reds was just going to be the tips of the fire, whereas most of the mane will be orange, and then the yellow will be very on the base around the face. A lot of the wet blending on the body I did off camera because it would be very tedious and very boring to watch, but all you have to do is control what you want. So once it's in a position where the yellows, oranges, and reds are in different spots where you want them to be and they look nice to you, then all you have to do is wait for it to dry and then give it a nice dry brush of black or dark brown. I used, uh, I used a heavy dry brush of dark, dark red to give it a very nice heated rock color. And then I gave it a very heavy dry brush, being careful not to get into the creases. The Hellcat is a very pretty mini in that you can dry brush over the rocks while still leaving the lava effect on the, on the inside. I gave it a fairly heavy dry brush and I gave it even more dry brush on the areas where it was darker, so the hindquarters and the bottoms of the feet were a lot darker of the red or maybe even black, whereas the chest was much brighter. You may want multiple coats of this, but again, it'll be all up to you. The lovely thing about painting fire is that you can do whatever you want with it because there's no set pattern for it. I just did mine very dark because that's the effect that I wanted. I left the main as bright as possible because I wanted that to be fire. I was even able to do a little bit of dry brushing around it so that it looked like it was giving off light. Now comes the fun part. You get to paint the symbol on the back. All of my Zodiac characters are going to have the symbol on them somewhere, so I had to look up the symbol of Leo, obviously. So I took a very detailed brush and I used the Mephiston Red and painted the detail fairly large. It would be a lot thicker than I intended it because then I would immediately take orange and make it a little thinner and then yellow and make it even more thin. And then I would even take a white maybe and put it on, on some very small areas to make it pop out more. And I'm very glad with how this turned out. I think the Leo symbol is one of my favorite parts of that.
And lastly, the very final step was to put object source lighting from the lava onto the Hellcat. Now this is a lot easier than you think it might be. All you do is take the, the Mephiston red and then just apply it very liberally all over the bottoms and the insides of the legs where the lava might hit. Object source lighting for lava is much easier since it's just, it's usually just one color. If you did choose, you could do orange and then also red, where the orange would be closer to the lava, but I just chose to use plain red. And finally, the inside of the mouth and the eyes would just be white with a little bit of yellow to help give it some depth. Not too much detail is needed here, but I just decided to fill the insides of the mouth with flaming hot lava because that seems like something Leo would do. And here you have it, a tutorial for my character of Leo. I'm going to have the rest of the miniatures doing speed paints and painted as soon as I can. I've ordered them, they will be here soon, and I'm very excited to finish this. It looks, it looks so good. I'm very proud of Leo. But thank you for watching. If you have any questions or any concerns or anything like that, please comment. Here's all my contact information for Eye of the Beholder, because I do commission painting for D&D groups, monsters, any game you like. You can visit my website, my Facebook page, anything you like. So, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.